Hi, and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be specifically looking at the dividing head. Now I say specifically because we've already looked at it in our Imperial Gear Cutting video. But today we're going to concentrate on this apparatus. We're going to start by looking at its accessories and after that we're going to look at the different parts of the head itself. We have our footstock, our median support, and our dividing head, also called an indexing head. It depends where you're from. And when it's set up, let's say for cutting a gear, it looks like this. So the footstock is a little bit like the tailstock on a lathe, but it is just a little bit like it because it is only used to support parts between centers. Now this is a very basic model, there's no height adjustment here, and I have a fixed center. It can move along its spindle's axis, it's not really a spindle, but there you go. And, well, it doesn't turn with the part, it's fixed, a solid center. There's no needle, roller, or ball bearings here. So that's why we have such a small hand wheel, so that I don't apply too much pressure on the part. There's no need to crush it, we want it just a little more than snug. So once I've tightened it down onto the part, well obviously I'm going to want to lock it in place. Now if I'm holding a part between centers and if I'm climb milling, I'm thrusting the cutting force downwards towards the table. If I'm cutting in the center of the part here, well that force will be divided equally between the dividing head and the footstock. Uh, but if I am cutting in the middle and I have a long part, there could be some flexibility there and that's a problem. And that's why we can use the median support. And all it does is it absorbs that downward force and transmits it directly to the table to lower vibration and, well, to make sure that I don't get deflection on the part that I'm milling. So this is really only to be used with long and flexible parts. Now, the anvil here, the height can be adjusted and different anvils can be used, obviously, to adapt to different shapes of parts. Now, I forgot to mention one thing about this solid center that doesn't turn with the part. If we were on a lathe and using this type of setup, well, I would have to apply a high pressure grease, a lithium grease or, or something of this sort. Uh, just to lubricate so that I don't seize the part onto the center because it will be turning a lot. On these uh, apparatus it's not necessary because let's say I'm cutting a gear. I, if I'm cutting a gear I will at most perform two maximum three full revolutions at a very slow pace. So it isn't a problem here. So we can just make it nice and a little more than snug and just leave it that way. We don't have to use grease on these centers. So here we are at the star attraction, the dividing head proper. Now first thing, we're going to start from this end and work our way back. Uh, we can see that we have in the spindle mounted here a center, which is logical because we want to hold parts between centers sometimes. And I have a drive plate here that's similar to the drive plate that we'd find on a lathe, with one major difference. I have two basically set screws or compression screws here that are made to snug up to the lathe, the lathe dog, the dog used to drive the part. Why is that? Well, you got to remember, we're not turning here. It's not a lathe, it's a mill. So when I mill a tooth, let's say on a gear or a flat on a hexagon or something like that, I don't want the part to be moving by whatever play there is between the dog and the drive plate. 
So once I've inserted the dog and I'm lined up, I want to snug this and lock it down so that the part will not move while I'm cutting. It'll only move when I turn the spindle. So this is the drive plate. Now this can be removed with the center and we can replace that with a chuck and we're going to be putting a four jaw chuck on here in just a few minutes. As we work our way back we run into or we see the direct indexing plate. In this case it's a 24 division indexing plate but not just an indexing plate a direct indexing plate. The direct indexing plates are used for really simple dividing operations that in this case, seen as there's 24 divisions, fall into the 2 divisions, 4, 6, 8, what else? We can do 12 and we can do 24, but that's about all that we'd be able to do with even divisions on a part with this direct plate. And it's quite simple to use. You turn the spindle to where the division you want to be and you lock it in place. Now this locks its position but you're going to want to use the lock at the back here to absorb the cutting force. I mean we don't want this to, to bear all the force that we're going to be using to cut the part. Direct indexing. Great, so we'll unlock that, pull that out, and we'll move our way down here. So here we have the simple indexing plate. Simple, direct. Very important. There's two ways of using this accessory, either by direct or by simple indexing. Now, Simple indexing gives you a lot more options as far as the number of divisions that you can get. But it is a little more complex. Why they call it simple, I don't know. But for simple indexing you need an indexing plate with a different number of whole circles on them. And we can see here that we have several different whole circles we have 16, 17, 19, 21, 23, and so on and so on, or 29, something like that, so on and so on. It's interesting to note that on all of these whole circles, the holes line up only in one place, and that well is obviously because of pi, that is 3.1416, and so on and so on. So none of them will align anywhere except for here. Now, to use, I'll just mention that this indexing, uh, simple indexing plate is reversible and on the back side we have a whole other number of uh, whole circles to use. So we can really get into doing a lot of divisions. Now, we have sector arms that are adjustable and displaceable. We have a plunger that locks in a specific hole on a specific circle because the plunger is excessive, uh, adjustable, I should say, along the handle here. And well, obviously I have a handle that when I turn, nothing happens. Why is that? I was just showing how to use direct indexing and for that you have to disengage the worm gear. So at the back here we have an engagement lever that will permit me to re-engage the worm gear. There we go. And as you can see, I get the movement that I want to have. Now, that's all fine and dandy. It doesn't tell me how to use all this stuff. We'll be looking at that in a minute. But what I want to do now is set up a four-jaw chuck and show how to align the head horizontally. This head had been moved to an angle and I want to bring it back so that the axis of rotation of the dividing head is parallel to the table. Very accurately parallel. And for that, well, you have to do uh, a little work and we'll be looking at that first off. So let's get our four jaw chuck on here. So I still don't know if my dividing head is positioned so that its axis is 
parallel to the table. So what I've done is I've set up this four jaw chuck and I've mounted in the chuck this very accurate test bar. And well, using the four jaw chuck, I've centered this test bar in the chuck. Now we can see that it's very center, but all this tells me really is that it's center at that point. I could have a movement something like this if the axis of my test bar wasn't parallel to the axis of my head. So I'm just going to move this down a little further and check again for movement. Now you're going to say, oh, you're moving your indicator, you won't have the same number. That's not a problem. I'm not checking for height or distance or anything like that. I'm checking for movement. So I want to have no movement here, and I have that, so I'm centered. And I want to come and check if I have any movement further down. So here I know that I'm on center here, and I set myself to zero. I'm going to come and slide down, and you'll see the numbers changing. One, well, I'm not necessarily aligned with it, and two, I know that my dividing head isn't parallel. That's why I'm doing this. I want to adjust it. What I'm looking for here isn't a number. It's movement. So let's take a look here and see. There, we can see that we have quite a bit of movement there. So somewhere around 20 to 30, or if you prefer 10 thousandths of an inch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come and set myself on the middle between both. There, by turning. And that is my center zero. So what I'm going to do here is come and just put that on zero. Just to make a point and say that, okay, I'm at plus five, minus five. Not quite. I'll just adjust that a touch. There, almost plus five. A little more than plus five. Adjust it a touch more. There's five. There's five. Okay. So five and five. We're doing okay. So the zero here is my center. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place myself on that zero. There I am. Okay. And I'm going to lock my spindle because now I don't want to turn this spindle anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a more accurate uh, dial indicator in my machine and come and check at two places to see what out of alignment I have as far as uh, horizontal alignment or parallel alignment with the top of the table. And then I can adjust the dividing head, head's inclination to read zero, zero in two places. Because I know that the distance between the top of the part and the center of rotation is the same at this point of rotation here as the point here is to the center. Why? Because right where that indicator is, is the center point as far as height goes. So there you go. Let's get another indicator mounted. So I have my part. I haven't changed the rotation here. So I have my more accurate little dial indicator. Important, I have a screw jack here that I've snugged up to the bottom of the forejaw. And that is to support this because I have loosened the screws, the adjustment uh, locking screws for the uh, pivoting of the head. And when you do that, well, this tends to want to fall. I mean, this is a very heavy forejaw chuck. So before you loosen those screws off, make sure that you support it. And I'm using a screw jack here because I can then adjust the height more accurately by turning the screw jack to, get, to raise or lower. And this here, this is just a block of wood. And what it is, well, it's insurance. It's important here. If this comes down, it comes down quick. So when I'm turning here, if something goes wrong and this falls, I don't want to get my fingers crushed. This will save me if something does really go wrong. Now, there is a graduated scale at the back of the dividing head here, a 360 degree scale, and I'll go and take a look at that and jack up here until I get to 
zero on that scale. That should be pretty close. And then the fine tuning I'll get with the dial indicator. So we check at one end, find the high spot, there it is, set to zero, and check at the other end, and we'll see how much we're off. Okay, so we see that we're close. So let's just adjust this a little bit. You may have just noticed that I moved down quite a bit more than what I would have seemed to have had to do. Uh, I was just a couple of thou before zero and I moved all the way down to six thou after zero. You have to remember the pivot point for this apparatus is right here. The first point that I checked is here. The second point that I checked is here. Both points are far from the pivot point. So if I lower this point I will be lowering this point as well. It just won't lower as much as this one. So I have to move a lot more here to get these two points at the same uh, position or same distance from the table. So I put myself on zero. close. Zero. There. Zero on both points. I am horizontal. Now, here's the bar that we were using. Now, this bar is quite accurate. I mean, it's straight and it's very cylindrical. And the diameter, well, is constant. So it's an accurate cylinder. So that's why I was using it to align here. Now, I held it at one end, remember, just to run through it once again. Indicated this end to zero. So when I was turning the dividing head, I was getting no movement here. When, however, I moved over to the other end, regardless of how inclined it was, I was getting ten thousandths of an inch movement on this end. So what did I do? Well, I could have gone through the trouble of aligning the part parallel to the axis of rotation of the machine, shimming it, finding out what's wrong with the forejock chuck, why is it not holding it parallel, and, well, that would have been a bit of a waste of time at this point because I'm not checking the four jaw chuck. I want to align the head. So without changing how I held it, I leave that the same, I come to this end and I check what's the high spot and what's the low spot or point. Now, I know that the high and the low were 10 thou separated. So if I move to 5 thou, I know that I'm in the middle between the high and the low. And that means that at that point of rotation, the top of the bar here and the top of the bar where I would centered it are at the same distance to the center of rotation of the dividing head. All I have to do then is without ever moving the rotation because I want to stay in that position, well, I can change the inclination to get the same height reading at both ends. And when I get zero and zero, well, I know that I'm horizontal, which means that I am parallel to the table in this way, but I am not parallel to the axis of movement of the table in this direction. And that's something that I would have to align separately. So 
You get the inclination first. You got to divide and conquer here. Get the inclination first. And once you have that, you can just leave the bar in there and redo the same exercise, but in 90 degrees removed to get this alignment here instead of that alignment there. And it's no more complex than that. So this is quite accurately parallel with the table. Now, that's about the limit of my uh, attention span. We're coming up on, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So that'll be it for today. So until we meet again in this part two of this video where we're going to be looking at how to use the head and get different accurate divisions on it, with it, well, have fun. Be safe and happy machining.